Welcome back to the conclusion of Super Marathon. It was the 1990s, and talks for a new Superman movie went on into the new millennium. There might have been an absence of Superman film, but Superman was alive and well on TV. There was Lois and Clark, Superman the Animated Series, and Smallville. During that time, the first of these ideas was Superman Reborn, where it was going to be loosely based on the Death of Superman story arc, and the main villain would have been Doomsday. But then it was later rewritten by Kevin Smith to be called Superman Lives. In this version, Brainiac would have played the main villain, and Doomsday was going to be his minion. Superman would have worn an all-black suit and been played by Ben Affleck, but when Tim Burton got involved, the casting changed to Nicolas Cage. As strange as that sounds, photos of him wearing the Superman costume were posted on the internet a decade later. After years of going nowhere, the movie that was next in line was Batman vs Superman, which sounded stupid to begin with. Akva Goldsman originally wrote the script for it, but when that got cancelled, he played Batman vs Superman in poster advertisement in I Am Legend as a joke. Then the last Superman movie to get rejected was Superman Flyby. J.J. Abrams' treatment would have had Superman to be a prince of Krypton and sent to Earth to save him from a civil war between Jor-El and his brother Katazor. An actor that was considered was, yeah, that's right, thank god that didn't happen. I guess by the mid-2000s, Warner Bros. said, screw it, let's just make another Superman movie and let's be aware that he's been gone for some time. That's where Superman Returns comes along. It's about when Superman leaves Earth for some time to explore the fragments where Krypton used to be. When Superman returns to Earth, he tries to reconnect his relationship with Lois Lane, played by Kate Bosworth. Superman Returns might have been praised by critics when it came out, but nowadays I'm part of the majority that doesn't think so. I felt like it was the same recycled plot of the first Superman movie. Lex Luthor just wants to cash in on some real estate. It seems far-fetched because who'd want to live here to begin with? Brandon Roth was... okay. Unlike Christopher Reeve, where he had some personality and charisma to him, Brandon Roth really lacks it. Maybe he lacked charisma because in the back of his mind he was worrying about the Superman curse. The Superman curse claims that any live-action actor who portrays Superman in TV or movies has something tragic happen to him. George Reeves on the 1950s TV show committed suicide and Christopher Reeve fell off a horse that left him paralyzed for the rest of his life. As for Brandon Roth, he was cursed to be on the show Partners. Kevin Spacey was probably the best cast decision of the movie, and he has some memorable moments of his own. Now I want the other thing. Come on, I know it's just dangling up to a few times. Let me hear it just once, please. Superman will never- WRONG! I found it weird that Miss Kent was alive even though she died in Superman 3. For a film that cost $270 million to make, it's definitely not action-packed. Most of the scenes are just dialogue, and there's maybe about 25 minutes worth of action. The visuals are truly the textbook definition of a mixed bag. For example, the CGI face on Marlon Brando looks great by today's standards, but the opening credit sequence looks like the graphics you would see on your fish screensaver. At least John Williams scores back and it still sounds great. What I've heard from people who actually read the original script, it was going to be better written and more emotional, but the studio cut the film down because they didn't want it to be too long. To be fair, it's not good or bad. Is it better than Superman 3 and 4? Yes but it doesn't touch the first two films. I give Superman Returns 2 stars out of 4. There was going to be a sequel, but due to the film not making as much money as Warner Bros. was aiming for and the writer's strike of 2007 and 2008, it was scrapped. Now that we live in an age where it's common for a movie series to be rebooted, it should come as no surprise the Superman film series has done the same. The director this time was Zack Schneider. It was a good choice due to his nice work on other graphic novel films like 300 and The Watchmen. Man of Steel is not your average Superman movie. Sure, it's another origin story, but done extremely well. It's about when Jor-El, played by Russell Crowe, sends his only son to Earth to save him from Krypton's destruction. I liked how in this version that they explained better why Krypton exploded. Kal-El lands on Earth and is raised by the Kents. It might sound like the same old tune, but here's what's different. This new Superman movie mainly consists of a solid chunk of the film just focusing on the man aspect of him, and later it focused on the super. This is a genius way to relate to Superman because he feels like an outsider and he wants to fit in with the rest of us. By the time he becomes Superman, he overcomes his inner conflict. But his true antagonist is General Zod, played by Michael Shannon. Yes, it does sound like the first two Superman movies, but you know what? I liked it more than the first two. Yes, you've heard right. This probably has to be the best Superman movie that they've made so far. For a superhero movie, it has a lot of emotion, but plenty of action. Speaking of which, the action scenes are as much of a showstopper as the visual effects of this movie. What really helped was that I saw this in RPX and that was an experience. So why isn't this movie perfect? Well for one, I didn't like all the drastic camera zoom ins during some of the fight scenes. Another was not really Amy Adams, but would it hurt to dye her hair? 
I think the worst casting decision was Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White. Putting aside ethnic differences, the main reason why I thought it was a bad casting decision was if you look at the character of Perry White, he's kind of the stereotypical hardball of a boss, and Lawrence Fishburne is pretty much a mellow kind of actor. With those minor problems aside, this easily has to be the best film I've seen this year so far and lived up to my expectations. Henry Cavill was great as Superman. He was built like Superman should be and he acted like Superman should be. I don't know who's a better Superman, but I think the answer might depend on what generation you're a part of. Comparing Man of Steel to Superman Returns is like comparing Batman Begins to Iron Man 3. I give Man of Steel 3.5 stars out of 4. Thanks for watching. An S. How about. Excuse me.